Chapter 9 of World War II Air War. Avenger. Toby, Toby, but deadly. The U.S. Navy multi role Grumman TBF lived up to its name, being retrovation to the Japanese in the Pacific. A low gray overcast, hunted by range brawls, hung like a tattered shadow round all over the Pacific Ocean on April 7, 1945, through the Mets pilots and crewmen of the Na Navy Grumman TBF Avengers and Curtis SB2C Hull Hell Divers strained their eyes to spot the, the tail telltale wake of ships down there somewhere below was a floating kamikaze force spared by Yamato, the world's largest battleship. Suddenly, the there was definitely moving towards units of the U.S. fleet off Okinawa. The Imperial Japanese Navy did it for Yamato, drawn up by her destroyer sh shield to force her away to Okinawa, scuttled herself in the shallow offshore, and pounded the American landing force with the big guns. The mission of the U.S. Navy flyers was to prevent this from happening as they sh shone at their quarry each tbf and tb2c crew selected a target and lined up to make its run the poorly tbf choice a shallow dive leading to with their 10 fish the sb2c came in september the bomb bay shape to drop their bombs. By the time Yorktown's flyers made their torpedo drops, Yamato was already crippled by the Helldiver attacks, but still capable of flight. She would not last much longer, though. One uh, of the other TVS relisted their deadly cargo and Within minutes, Yamato was lit in flames and smoke as the torpedoes and more bombs struck, struck home. The mighty ship, pride of the Imperial Japanese Navy, finally scrambled to the battle. She sank at 2.35 p.m. Happening diver the Cope de Grace to the world's biggest battleship was a high point and the career of the TBF, TBF Avenger, one of the aeronautical successes to rebuild of World War II. To set her before the attack on Pearl Harbor, Grumman's replacement for the Douglas TBD Devastator was designed to serve through most of the Pacific War. It became the most important attack bomber in the Navy inventory and was ordered in greater numbers than any previous type. In March 1939, the U.S. Navy requested a new torpedo bomber. The specifications and a crew of three pilot, radio men, and gunner, a 300 mile per hour top speed with a stall speed of 70 miles per hour and a range of 1,000 miles carrying a torpedo or three 500-pound bombs. In addition, the new aircraft had to adapt the crew armor and able to withstand the stress of flying during attacks on ships. Also, thermal was machine gun armament. Both were shaping during the target run and to prevent the aircraft with uh, some protection from imitating enemy fires. Wing folding to assist hanging, hanging aboard carriers and antenna
Belgium ordnance they were also specified all previous Navy attack aircraft had carry off of Swissel all previous Navy attack British loads under a drag mentally out of 13 possibility Swissel compared the Navy order of prototypes from Vert and Buster as well as from Grumman the G40 similar to the the F4F Wildcat fighter, but apparently larger. That cemetery no accidents on Grumman's part. If the G40 was selected by Navy, a new bomber could be built in less time using construction techniques familiar to the workforce. On April 8, 1940, the Navy Bureau of Aeronautics, which has the service contractor of airplane ordered two prototypes of government single engine three place aircraft that was to be powered by a 1700 horsepower two stage right R2600-8 engine one of two power plants proposed. The design team for the Grumman G40 was led by engineer William T. Swindor, one of the three joint tutors of command, the Navy convert the Grumman and the Wright aircraft to replace the TBD ordered 285 protection aircraft some seven months before later the prototypes flew. Designed as XTBF1 and XTBF2, the first Avengers details the T machine lacking a dorsal fin and having a similar unplaced area and the guess that the XT BF1 be made the first flight on August 1st, 1941 and test uh, Bob Hill immediately be training an original test program. Last it no November twenty eighth. When the plane was destroyed in a crash after the crew forced bailout following a fire in the bomb bay, by the second aircraft was well on its way to completion, the doors of a large dorsal fin added improved stability. Flight test with the XTBF2 began on December 20th. They showed that the crater tail area had and tendency for the new attack bomber to become unstable and further design changes were necessary. It began after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the nation was swept by a wave of anger, and the name Avenger seemed highly preferable for a new Navy attack bomber. Modern fighters and bombers for all the U.S. services were vital if the final victory was to be won. Government already committed to building the F-4F Wildcat, realized the production space at its best page plant on Long Island was about to run out. The General Motors Corporation was Therefore, bought in to take over TBFB production at its East Aircraft Division as soon as possible. Eastern Aircraft built Avengers would have slight change in design and be known as GBMs rather than TBFs. While GM took up Grumman began building Avengers, the first GBF one rolled out on. January 2nd, 1942, and two months later, Navy crews on Torpedo Squadron VT-8 were visiting Beth Page to see the new aircraft. Internal hangover of GBF-1s to VT-8 was made at the end of March. The squadron detachment was given barely enough time to enter the Avenger at Naval Air Station Norfolk. 
Virginia before the men received new orders, though. Virginia was the Pacific, and the carrier Hornet, already at sea, carried the rest of the VT-8 to war Hornet of Japanese planes to occupy Midway Island. The Navy called for volunteers to fly six TBF to be based out to provide some additional defense for some small garrison. On June 1st, 1942, the 6th TBF-1 was the volunteer crew to Fort Island, Hawaii, set course for Midway, 1,500 miles away. Once on Midway, the Avenger crews had but three days to wait for action. On June 4th, the Japanese fleet was ordered to be only 100 miles away, taking off to attack the Amini carriers. A small U.S. force passed Amini and to bomb and surf Midway. Lieutenant Landon K. Harbo and to bomb surf Midway. To note that three Mitsubishi AM6 M20 fighters set up a Of firing pass on them. Like all Japanese aircraft, the A6M had been given an allied code name for rapid identification with male names simplifying fighters in this day, a Zeke, which sounded similar to the aircraft's popularity nickname among Japanese and Americans alike of Zero. Luckily, the enemy pilot did not pass home their attack, and the TBF, TBF soon set it their own primary target. The Japanese carriers, trying to evade the strong combat air patrol carriers, throwing flak from the ships, the TBF ran into their and torpedo drop. It was no fault the crews, the carriers that. The torpedoes. The six TBF pilot by Ensign Albert Ernest and crew turn drummer JB Hunter, radio operator radio man third class Harry S. Fair, when Ernest made it back to Midway with Terrence Connor dead and his hydraulics shot out. He landed on one good main wheel and without flaps. With the loss of five TBS from Midway, added to those TBS that were slaughtered in the Midway Sea Battle, BT-8 suffered roughly that day. 44 men out of 20 aircraft were lost. It was up to other units of older Douglas SBD Dauntless dive bombers to do the Avengers at Midway striking a blow from which the Japanese Navy were never fully recovered by sinking four carriers. The U.S. Navy aircraft all but wiped out the crew of the Japanese Navy flyers, men who had spent years in training that could be replaced only by individuals without training under war conditions would not be as thorough. This brought the TBF the disappointing combat to view. Navy recognized that it had promised good performance load carrying. Also, the lanes through the rest of 1942 production ceased. Establishing the Navy to rapidly retire its remaining obsolete torpedo bombers to push a new TBF squadron once the TBF ones was. In service, it definitely entered the Navy as later the mean cross. To follow numerous specialized roles without entering different aircraft, German Richard Plant permitted to build the TBF ones until the end of 1943, by which the General Motors Eastern Aircraft Division of Trenton, New Jersey, was in full production. Grumman built 2,293 TBS-1s 
dropping the last aircraft in December 1943, Eastern first GPS-1 delivered to the Triton plant on November 12, 1942, General Motors having signed a contract to build 100 to build 1,200 aircraft before final plans as all aircraft were thrust back across the Pacific. The U.S. Navy wanted the carrier force equipped with the best bombs, bombers, torpedo planes, and fighters that could be trained. The, this, the obsolete GBD devastator passed from the scene and uh, even the rugged and reliable SBD Dauntless began passing the torch to the GVF, which created the torpedo attack world, which occurred efficient bombing capabilities and crude models of the SB2C Hell Diver, restrained to bomb delivery with a useful strategy capable from cannon or machine gun armor joint. The fleet in late 1943. Remember that the Avenger and Helldiver provided a highly efficient the soft of the Battle of Midway was still a very recent memory with the TVF marked on first of major operations. U.S. Grand Hill beginning on August 7, 1942, for the Operation Task Force 61 Airline encoded squadrons of VT-3, VT-7, and VT-8 equipped with TBS to the carrier Enterprise, Wasp, and Saratoga. During those dark days to the wild days, Royal Avenger power, it was for a well-formed landing base from the deck of a carrier as part of Enterprise Air Group until the find out November 1942 forced to return action with our elevators was still under repair and a flight system park of our TVS force. Among these large TVS crews, the previous crippled and treasured Ashlands on November 13-14, earlier in the Battle of the Eastern Summons, Saratoga Air Group of TVSB and SCD sank the Lake Carrier were a new draw on August 24th, 1942. Principal honors went to the 28 dive bombers, SCV of VSV, BP3, VDC struck home to control the demise of a sixth Japanese carrier to be sunk in World War II. The fight to secure Samoa was recorded the combat to the, of the TBF and the marine aviators with VFP-133 took to Henderson Field Grand General in November 1942. This squadron design was somewhat a throwback to pre-war days, sending it, it stood for Marine Scout Bombing Squadron. The term scout was finally dropped in 1946. And Doing combat operations by using the TVF and on familiar torpedo bombing role, VNSV 131 also stored hits hit on high on November 13th. The Marine Tin Fish helped in the record of the bottom of the first Japanese battleship to be lost in action. Therefore, the Marine TVFB confirmed the traditional length of role of coast air support of interoperation launched of the war. Marine TVFB crew were also trained to carrier decks, but was December 1944 the first all-marine escort carrier block island was commissioned, flying with missions and TVS to support the local wild campaign of the North German and Eastern developed the venture to attack more so the TVF 1B and production to follow the TV1 and TVF 1A and the later result the Britain Air Arm fleet 
Um, Grumman has been built its final version of TVF 1C among the changes. The 1C was an increase and two experiment over the TVF 1. Following the original overweight mounted 50 caliber machine gun, useful during sacrifice runs, combat pilots wanted greater firepower in the TVF 1C. The fixed gun in the forward upper fuselage was removed and a single 50 caliber machine gun was installed in each wing just out forward of the folding break point. All changes include mountings for 57 gallon auxiliary fuel tank in the bomb bay and wing racks for 2 gallon 53 gallon external tanks. These increase the overall fuel capacity to 725 gallons given its TVS, TVF 1C, a range of 1,105 miles in common with most TVF and TVM models. Newer and serious modifications were made without need to change the aircraft basic design and Veru Thorodoma's efforts was rated the duty to require each attention to the Grumman TBF one c at equipment the Eastern General Motors TBF one c and TBF TBF and TV one D aircraft were seen miles fitted with anti submarine radar and starboard ring fog plus under-wing rocket launcher pods firing the ideal radar for Navy aircraft so seaborne targets can be detected early enough for an attack to be planned and launched. The current, the men, hours, and millions of dollars, the radar scanner provide the, the center section of the ideal scrap. Surface search radar or ASB air to surface type B employed a move to a 6 degree AS of 40 nautical miles and a submarine 5 miles micro radar replaced ASB the western electric model AP3 radar was fitted to many TVFs and TVMs with a 14 inch parabolic antenna built into a pod Located on the starboard wing, leading edge air pickup ship at 50 miles and submarines 50 miles with the additional design of size airborne target. Recommend what also fatal will carry attacks and carry both the TV and TVM for all assembly individual aircraft by a powerful search by primary to but submarines mounted on a port wing back. The TVF and TVM provide numerous systems, including turbojet that was experimentally fitted in the aft fuselage of the first XTPF and a wide variety of loads uh, such as mines, steel buoys, and 3.5 inch and 5 inch rockets. The best of the feature was either the Fitted Run Battle built exclusively by Eastern Aircraft 4,650 TVM 3s were manufactured extremely similar to earlier Avengers, the TVM series, and introduced further equipment changes, including autopilot, the late model TVM 3, manually the 3D and 3E versions were powered. A Pat and Whitney R2000 plus 20 engine with right at 1,900 horsepower for takeoff. Weighing more than one ton less than earlier version, the TVM 3D was a radar equipped version introduced for anti submarine warfare work around the waiting searchlight. The TVM 3D had APS 4. Radar and underwing pod reduced armament. The original Stinger virtual gun position 
in the transport site panels were over an example of tow hook was easily put it to the TBM3 in place of the retractable unit of earlier models, which added 11 inches to aircraft overall length. The withstanding improvement the vendors introduced the TB3 to attain 276 miles per hour, 16,500 feet, with a rate of climb of to 2,060 feet per minute. With these fighters drew about every mile per hour, it many fighters put in a broad. Although it was stretching things a little to call the Avenger a fighter, Navy and Marine TBF and TBM crews were credited with a highly respectable score of 98 Japanese aircraft destroyed by the end of the war. Avenger's crew, although not nothing mixed up, up with the Japanese, often throwing their big airplanes all over the sky to bring their fixed and unfixable current and lower fuselage guns to bear result, often making a banshee of the Japanese theory that light unarmed warplanes and feet recover protected aircraft in combat. All remaining TBM models completed during the war were based on the TBM-3, and including the winterized TBM-J with extra production for equipment and under Arctic conditions, the also the crop for night attack was reduced to deleted example and the TBM-3 was equipped with as an early warning aircraft, like other TBS models, would have needs in February 1943, critical of out of danger replacements, Henderson Field, the recruited VMTB-132, except the both DVVFs and SPDs and VMTB 143 and 143B, they actual flying from drone. Additional DVS guardians were the OTVF squadrons, a range of Japanese island strong points, smaller air groups, credit of bomber fighters, escorters, and main visit of fixed of CV-3 through 1943, the TVS squadron, manning their right role out of this work among the strangers to the city, but out of, of, of the resistance of the Tokyo Express, the general name given to Japanese seaborne supply runs to their island garrisons. Small any units were left on islands of no major strategic importance for U.S. warplanes were concerned. Navy Avengers often attack targets and around rubble the principal Japanese naval base on New Britain, which was to more or less held up to the end of the war. The enemy garrisons were considered by Allied air, sea, and air blocks Marking invasion. By the fall of three, the United States had taken the twelve of Tijuana, Macon, and Brooklyn in the Gilbert Islands. In November, carriers launched the first Avenger night missions, starting to reduce neutral enemy forays about the fleet and their early hunter killer. Operations of TVF teamed with radar aircraft F 6F Hellcats fighters. They met with some disaster for entering the Rentist the Imperial Navy, I still believe it had that night. After the capture of the Marshall Islands, the United States had a central foothold with to march out of. November 17, 1894, where Enterprise launched the first TBF night bomber attack on the 17th Navy Torpedo Squadron VT 10 of the September 17th and 18th, 1945, where Enterprise launched the first TBF night bomber on the 17th 
Navy Torpedo Squadron ZG-10 sent 12 hunters to carry out a successful petition of the harbor which then scored 13 hits on enemy ships. On the following days, aircraft from the target wing of the 434 was over its favorite term. The island in the Marshalls had been secured by February 21st and before the month end, Navy's tracks had been made on principal islands and the Marine group appeared. Of course, support followed before a force of 15 U.S. carriers was unleashed against the Marines in June. During the pre invasion assault on Saipan on June 13th, BT 16 scupper Robert H. Isley was lost, making a shallow angle approach to fire rockets at targets on the airstrip and phone in Lincolnton. Flames later, when the United States had surfed over a major Boeing B 29 base, it was re renamed Isley Field to honor the giant Avenger pilot. The Navy took a serious view of GBF losses and the Marine training rocket attack missions on enemy positions as primary cause. The necessary low and slow approach to ground targets was very dangerous, and for a time, the use of rockets was restricted to specific targets that minimized the risk of GBF carriers. Rockets then used to be a major item of ordnance in the Navy armament. Ever as a full salvo, the salvo was equivalent to destroyers blockade in terms of destructive powers. These early Navy rockets were the 3.5 inch kind carried on British type under ring mounted found reduced the aircraft speed as much as 17 knots. Rails were suddenly found at an Andre giving way to so called zero length rockets, including rockets cup to a pair of severs and wire electrically, the ignition space being enough to propel it forward with. Without any guidance. Apart from suffering combat attention over the island, the cells of Japanese were having in Pacific Russian Turkey shooter. The reduced victory for the US carrier groups over successful ways of attacking Japanese planes, the series of air bells but broke out a remaining Japanese carrier base air power. Our U.S. admirals wanted to jack but if they could sink an enemy carrier's that would launch the ill-fated air groups slotted by Navy Hellcats. Future U.S. operations to consider safer at 3.40 p.m. on June 20, 1944, retiring Japanese carrier force was signing but Got up by a TBF from the Enterprise. Although targets at extreme range and the U.S. carriers Admiral Mark Michener gave the order to go, and at 411, the force of 54 TBF 77 dive bombers and 85 fighters roared off into the evening sky. At 640, Michener fire sighted the Japanese who had. Already lost two carriers to American submarines. Vice Admiral Soto, Admiral Flagship Tahino, finally torpedoed by Abacor and Silico, sank by Canavano, passing their attacks through Black and Seven, reminded that Ozo's carrier go into the air. American dive bombers damaged several warships and was able to oilers, Jerto and Surimaru, which were physically abandoned and scuttled.
The only other Japanese loss occurred for JVM vendors from BT-24 of the light carrier Brother Rood, led by Lieutenant J.G. George Brown, attacked the light carrier Airto, a bill stuck by anti-aircraft fire, at any cost, probably did, did succeed in scoring a hit while the torpedo of the one of his comrades, Lieutenant G.G. Warren Amok, definitely found its mark. His plane badly shot up. The wounded Brown ordered his radio men and gunner to bail out. They tried to bring his Avenger back to Bellwood. He never m made it, disappearing into a cloud that Omar tried to guide him home, parachuting into a cloud as Omar tried to guide parachuting safely and floating in their life jackets. Brown crewmen were later rescued by ship on Task Force 58 and reported that they had the suspicion of seeing Hedo go down. Heading back to their ship, the air crews weighed their chances of bringing off a night landing on the bounce out decks of the carrier, even if the fuel tanks didn't not run dry long before the flat tops were sighted. Recognizing the pilot's different mission run, heard it thanks for the carrier's planes by ordering the fleet to turn on every available light, you know, making them to avoid ditching. Even so, 23 Avengers and 29 SB2Cs were lost that night. Many from ditchings, uh, more, 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 more and more islands base were secured and their normal call the Royal Marines Garden was a TVFP within the draft. Left his carrier as did further to garrison the surrounding sea lines. Only shipping patrol transport to a garrison ground and turn became for VMTB-137 and VMTB-242, respectively, during the summer 1944. The fleet maritime was gearing up operations for Missouri and the Philippines. The October 1944 invasion of Little Shaw was battle with the fascist of flight. The Navy had since passed at Later, later, the Japanese scored heavy clipping the U.S. carrier Petrol so badly she had to be abandoned. Later, also witnessed the first mass use of kamikaze planes, which rolled the strong American escort carrier force, outstanding any Japanese successes with the sinking of the battleship. Marasi by Avengers and Hell Divers, plus the continuing of enemy air power for which the few well trained pilot displacement with the Philippine landings had established a beach held navy and marine TBFB once before the push inland at sea. Independence carried the first. Night air group compared of fighters of a TB M1D and VTM 41. The group put out the way to true roll the clock carrier operations. December 1944, Enterprise became the first night carrier with independence, along with the current air operations until the war's end. By early 1945, the carrier force was pouring on the enemy's front door, having 
the Japanese shipping so badly that its merchant fleet had virtually ceased to exist. Damage influencing largely by TBM and Curtis SB Juicy attacks also brought the Imperial Navy almost to its knees. A grunt of despised enemy rose to suicide tactics to starve off the incredible defeat and for over with ran spoils and low visibility the carrier air groups were held heavily with January and Savior of Iwo Jima the island was taken permanently to provide an emergency bomber airfield roughly halfway between the Marshalls and Japan on February 19th TBFB made the devout over the Japanese home islands so far as covert warfare was considered the April 1st invasion of Okinawa 450 miles from Japan should have been relatively safe for naval sea and air forces which were strong enough to deal with numerous targets certainly including the mighty Yamato and her escort Although the terrible kamikaze tried their best to secure some kind of victory of Okinawa, the U.S. carrier group maintained the pressure on Japan. TBSB made a sense of successful strikes on home islands. By 10th and August 15th, which made two Boeing B-29 Superfortress atomic bomb strikes had wiped out the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan had to surrender on August 15th. Terminations of the TVM production more or less concluded with the final surrender of Japan on December 1945. By then, a grand total of 9,839 aircraft had been manufactured by Eastern, having participation in every major operation, plus numerous of minor ones throughout most of the Pacific War. The Grumman Avenger had earned an honorable place in the history of aviation. Luckily enough, examples will still exist today to give younger people some impressions of what it was like to go to war in the, the tough, reliable old aircraft that, because it was tubby and reliable, slow, was nicknamed Turkey. One of history's small irons is the fact that in 1954, the Grumman Avenger had become the first military aircraft to be operated by the newly formed Japanese Maritime Self Defense Force. Ten GBM 3W2s were delivered that year, with ten GBM 3S2 models finally in 1955. Those machines were flown patrol duties until their retirement in 1960. That year in which other nations also replied to replace their Grumman patrol bombers, the Avengers served the Japanese well. No aircraft from the small force were lost during the six years or so that the plane were used to provide viable training for many patrol crews. That's the ending of chapter nine. Well, I'd like to say thank you to the veterans who fought for us to be free. And if you see a veteran that looks sad, maybe just go and talk to them and say hi. Maybe they just need a friend. And give them a tea or coffee. That's the ending of day nine of 11 days of remembrance. I'll read another chapter tomorrow.